Hi everyone, welcome to another peace discussion video, this time focused on the piece Treason from the series 21st Century Royalty. 21st Century Royalty, in general terms, is a series that explores the kings and queens of our modern era, that is to say, the figures that we admire, the qualities that we aspire to attain in the 21st century, as well as the things that befall those who are placed in the point of celebrity or stardom, not necessarily by their own desires. For a more comprehensive look at the series, I will link an overview in the description of this video. Regarding treason specifically, let's begin with the title of this piece. Similar to hashtag influencer Zah, the use of grammar here is meant to evoke multiple meanings with the parentheses. We read the title as treason, but it could just as much be read as reason, and there's this constant back and forth because of the use of the parentheses. It's meant to be a suggestion that a link exists between the two. Unlike with hashtag influencer Zah, the connection that I'm trying to make here isn't about the oral sentiment, but rather on the semantic proximity of both words. The idea is to immediately force viewers to consider that there is some sort of intent or reason that could be taken as treasonous or bucking the trend. Regarding the composition, the figure is seated before a large gate behind him to create a sense of him as the gatekeeper. The gate stretches from the left side of the picture plane to the right, and as it does so on the right side, it becomes a bit derelict. The figure dons an everyman attire with a large cape behind him. He holds a gun in his right hand and a crumpled paper in his left. He's seated as to show a sense of power and authority and ownership. He guards, he governs, he dictates, and his forceful expression seems to reiterate and reinforce this notion. Surrounding the gun in his right hand, there are aiming reticles and a bevy of sparkles. And these encompass the right side of his face as well, and they direct attention upward towards the word security and target sighted above his head. The paper in his left hand is crumpled and surrounded by arrows, and it's deliberately meant to be a sort of epicenter, given the way that the arrows surround and direct the attention right back at the paper. In the broader area around the paper in the top right corner of the picture plane, there are emojis with various other symbols that are familiar to online and social media activity. Again, there's a large sense of focus placed directly on the paper, and there are bullet holes to left the figure between the paper and the figure's head. I really meant to capture this sense of the eye jetting around, that we are actively moving from point to point to point to point here, and in sort of jagged streaks as well. Last noticeable but still present in the composition are chains between the lower space and the figure himself. And you'll start to notice these if you look between the figure and the gate. This is also a good moment to mention that here in Treason is where Parma Violet and Violet those two separate hues are first introduced into the 21st century royalty color palette. In this case, and as it continues, I typically am using this color to associate it with the fairly time-old tradition of purple being a color of royalty or royal authority. Moving away from the composition, I want to now focus on the conceptual conceits and the emotional impact of this piece. Primarily, treason speaks to the in-crowd sentiment that's found within tribe or mob mentality in online spaces. Individuals online can seek out exactly who they'd like to associate with and ignore anyone else, and they can even reject others' ideas and only accept those that are held as true or worth believing in their own eye. The idea goes a bit further, however, to suggest that anything that's outside of one's realm of thinking or outside of the in-crowd is something that should be eschewed and outright banned or shot on sight, as one might say. Secondarily, but still heavily acknowledged in this piece, is the tendency of online users to report content as malicious or derogatory, simply because it displeases them or disagrees with their sensibilities. At the time of the piece's production in 2019 and 2020, this was something that I was particularly noticing on some social media platforms. There was an option at the time to report content as being annoying or uninteresting, which starts to call into question by what standard exactly are we to measure online content if we can just simply find something annoying and then be able to report it as problematic or malicious? A great deal of power is placed in the hands of the user when these sorts of options are presented, and that's a big part of what treason is calling to mind as well. Where is this power being utilized and what is the potential pitfalls of offering users this sort of power? 
You'll notice between targets sighted above the figure's head, the word short is sort of written in on the side. And this is meant to suggest that potentially this mentality is very close-minded. At its heart, treason is meant to call out this mob mentality, not only for creating a closed-mindedness that doesn't allow the opportunity to consider others' position, but more importantly, how it seeks to demonize those who disagree, even when harmless. And that's one of the reasons why you'll notice the dissenters will be prosecuted sign that's hanging on the right side of the picture plane. If we return to those chains earlier, they're subtle and they blend a bit with the gate in the background. And I did that on purpose, especially with the cape regarding the purple color, all of which sort of melds together. They're meant to be known as last to drive home this notion that the sort of mentality of being unwilling to consider other options and other ideas can be very constrictive. It can be very stifling to our psychology and to our understanding of the world and conception of reality. Moving now into the references found in this piece, the sparkles that I mentioned earlier are very rigid cross shapes, and they're actually a reference to an anime called Kill a Kill. In that particular anime, which was very inspiring to me when I first saw it, just because of the whole concept behind it, as well as the art direction, stars represented the power of individuals that they had over their underlings. And so those stars and that effect of those stars, which were always four points and very sharp, would be emphasized oftentimes in the show at very critical moments to continue highlighting a sense of stratification between different levels of characters and different abilities and skill sets. The emojis that I used in this piece were contemporaneous with the time of the piece's production, and similarly with the other symbols as well, particularly with regards to how Facebook was laid out at the time of this piece's production. And as I mentioned earlier, that phrase, it's annoying or uninteresting in the top right corner, was something that was actually specifically on Facebook at the time. It was an option at the time for recording ad content and particularly useful to that end. But if memory serves, I believe it was also possible to flag user-generated content with that same marker. I think I'll stop there for now. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about this piece. And I hope it ultimately helps to strengthen the connection you have with it. Please feel free to share this video with anybody else who might find it worthwhile, and until the next one, thank you.